Response Control, activate guidance. Launch Control, guidance is now active. Launch Control, advance to engine ignition one. Launch Control, vehicles at engine ignition one. Launch Control, activate control, standby. Launch Control, control is now in standby. Launch Control, verify throttle 100%. Control throttles 100 percent. Control racing position, verify nav and beta up. Launch control position racing, nav and beta up are all go. Control arm ignition sequence. Launch control ignition sequence is on. Launch control, engage auto set sequence at T minus two seconds. Control, now standing by. Control, begin 15-second countdown. Take the control, 15-second countdown. Commencing at... 100 kilometers up in the air is inherently not safe. It's got enough energy to ruin your weekend. I'm uh, Rowan, I'm a PhD candidate in neuroscience and regenerative sciences at Mayo. I'm working on exploring the regenerative capacity of adipose tissue and potentially engineering it, seeing the effects of suborbital flight on our patented nanoparticle uptake. So this is our experiment that will be flying on the rocket flight tomorrow. So there's no way from space to scalably scan our planet's mineral and water assets that are so valuable to society today. Uh, we're employees of the Forest Space Institute. Our payload is called Space 2. It's a, it's a physics experiment studying early planetary formation, and it's also a test bed for CubeSat hardware. There has to be a space-based solution for us to scan the planet's resources. One way to do this is using a low-frequency radar. Really, when you go to a lower frequency, you're able to actually have radio waves that penetrate through the Earth's surface. This is a, uh, theoretically, a, a one-hour engineering process in which we can engineer cells to express your gene of interest um, for personalized medicine. And when we get up to microgravity, all these particles inside, different kinds of glass beads, some acrylics, and then also uh, lunar regolith, those start interacting and colliding. They lose energy over time. and the characterizing that energy loss is how we study early planetary formation. So using the low frequency radio waves from this type of system, we can see up to two kilometers underground, 
and actually get an idea of what sorts of resources lie at that same depth. There's this gap of knowledge called the meter size barrier where they don't know how these particles get to the meter size. Okay. And so by studying well, that's the, what you guys are doing. Exactly. Right? Hello Aerospace fans, it is a beautiful 40 degrees out here in the middle of the desert, but uh, we're real excited to have you out here with us this morning. Today we prepare for Mission 4. The Sarge vehicle has been flown three times. If we have a successful launch and recovery today, we will have one more launch reusability proof than SpaceX. We're targeting to achieve greater than 80 kilometers on today's Ignition sequence. Launch control, ignition sequence is armed. On central, engage auto sequence at T minus two seconds. Launch control, now standing by. XSO begins 15 second countdown. XSO, 15 second countdown. 15. Ground a bit, 1200 miles an hour, 33,000 feet. IIP diverged enough, we should have an abort shutdown. Safety, 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 heads up on the range, we're coming in without a drogue. Safety, 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 we have a vehicle incoming, high speed, it's going to land remote from the launch pad. Have an impact. Safety, safety, safety level two emergency response team. Can you uh, approach the launch pads? Uh, there was enough fuel on board, there may be a fire. So it looks like we have come back in with the vehicle not tethered by the drogue. This is rocket science. We'll fix it and we will be going again. <laughs> 